Welcome back to Attack of the jack o -Lanterns. A woman came to the door and dropped packages of Hershey Kisses into our bags. You kids are out awfully late, she said. Do you live around here? No, I replied. We don't really know where we are. We're in a strange neighborhood and we're being forced to trick or treat by two headless pumpkin creatures. And they say they're going to make us trick or treat forever. Help us. Please, you've got to help us. <laughs> That's good, the woman laughed. That's very funny. You have a good imagination. She closed the door before I could get out another word. At the next house, we didn't even bother to ask for help. We knew no one would believe us. Your bags are so full, the woman exclaimed. You must have been trick-or-treating for hours. We... we like candy a lot, Walker replied wearily. I glanced back at the pumpkin heads. They were motioning impatiently. They wanted us to move on to the next house. We said goodbye to the woman and made our way across the front yard. Our trick-or-treat bags were heavy, so we dragged them along the grass. As we headed to the next driveway, Tabby hurried up beside me. What are we going to do? She whispered in my ear. I shrugged. I didn't know how to answer her. I'm so scared, Tabby confessed. You don't think these pumpkin creatures really plan to make us trick-or-treat forever, do you? What do they really want? Why are they doing this to us? I don't know, I said, swallowing hard. I could see that Tabby was about to cry. Lee was walking with his head down. He dragged his bulging trick-or-treat bag behind him. He was shaking his head, muttering to himself. We stepped up to the next porch and rang the doorbell. A middle-aged man in bright yellow pajamas opened the door. Trick or treat, we cried wearily. He dropped a little Tootsie Rolls into our bags. Very late, he muttered. Do your parents know you're still out? We dragged on to the next house, and the next, and the next. I kept waiting for a chance to escape, but the two creatures never let us out of their sight. They stayed right with us, keeping in the shadows, their eyes glowing red from the deepening fire inside their heads. They chanted, forcing us to cross the street and do the long row of houses on the other side. More houses. I'm so scared. Abby repeated to me in a trembling whisper. So is Lee. We're so scared. We feel sick. I started to tell her that I felt the same way, but we both gasped when we saw someone walking along the street. A man in a blue uniform. At first I thought he was a policeman, but as he stepped under the streetlight, I saw that he wore a blue work uniform. He had a blue baseball cap on his head. He carried a large black lunchbox in one hand. He must be coming home from work, I told myself. He was whistling softly to himself, walking with his head down. I don't think he saw us. Tabby changed that. Help, she screamed. Sir, please help us. The man raised his head, startled. He squinted at us. Tabby began running across the grass to him. The rest of us followed, dragging our heavy trick-or-treat bags. Help us, please, Tabby pleaded shrilly. You've got to save us. The four of us hurtled breathlessly into the street. We surrounded the startled man. He narrowed his eyes at us and scratched his brown, curly hair. What's wrong, kids? Are you lost? He asked. Monsters, Lee exploded. Headless jack-o'-lantern monsters. They captured us. They're forcing us to trick-or-treat. The man started to laugh. No, it's true, Tabby insisted. You've got to believe us. You've got to help us. Hurry, Lee cried. The man scratched his hair again. He squinted at us, studying our faces. Hurry, please hurry, Lee wailed. I stared back at the startled man. Would he help us? You've got to help us, Lee pleaded. Okay, I'll go along with the joke, the man said, rolling his eyes. Where are your monsters? There, I cried. We all turned back to the front porch. No one there. The pumpkin heads were gone. Disappeared. Tabby gasped. Lee's mouth dropped open. Where did they go? Walker murmured. They were standing right there, Tabby insisted. Both of them, holding their heads in their hands. Really? The man let out a long sigh. You kids have a good Halloween, he said wearily, but give me a break, okay? I just got off work and I'm beat. He shifted his black lunchbox to the other hand. Then we watched him make his way up the driveway. He disappeared around the back of the house. Let's get out of here, Lee cried. But before we could run, the two pumpkin heads leaped out from behind a low hedge, the red flames hissing inside their heads. Their jagged mouths were turned down in angry snarls. More houses, they insisted, rasping the words together. But we're so tired, Tabby protested. Her voice cracked. Again, I saw tears wetting her eyes. Let us go, please, Lee begged. More houses. More. You can never stop. Never. Never. I can't, Lee cried. My bag is full. Look. He held out the bulging trick-or-treat bag to the pumpkin heads. Candy bars spilled over the top. Mine is full, too, Walker declared. It's full to the top. I can't squeeze in another piece of candy. 
We have to go home, Tabby cried. Our bags are totally full. That's no problem, one of the pumpkin heads replied. No problem, Tabby wailed. No problem. Start eating, the pumpkin head ordered. Huh? We all gasped. Start eating, he insisted. Start eating. Hey, no way, Lee protested. We're not going to stand here and... The creatures appeared to rise up. Bright yellow flames shot out of their eyes. A roar of hot wind escaped their jagged, snarling mouths. The wind burned my face. We all knew what would happen if we refused to do as they said. We'd end up inside the flames. Lee grabbed a chocolate bar from the top of his trick-or-treat bag. He tore off the wrapper with a trembling hand, and he shoved the candy into his mouth. We all started to eat candy. We had no choice. I shoved a Hershey bar into my mouth and started to chew. I couldn't even taste it. A big gob stuck to my teeth, but I shoved more in and kept chewing. Faster. Faster. The pumpkin heads ordered. Please, Tabby begged with a mouthful of red licorice. We can't. Faster. Eat. 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 I shoved an entire bag of candy corn into my mouth and struggled to chew. I saw Walker pawing through his bag, looking for something he could eat quickly. Faster. Eat. The fiery heads demanded, floating over us. Lee choked down his fourth musketeer bar. He grabbed a Milky Way and started to unwrap it. I, I'm gonna be sick, Tabby declared. Faster, faster, came the raspy command. No, really, I feel sick, she cried. Eat more, eat faster. Lee started to choke. A gob of pink taffy shot out of his mouth. Tabby slapped him on the back until he stopped coughing. The pumpkin heads ordered. I, I can't, Lee cried in a hoarse whisper. The creatures leaned over him, angry flames shooting from their eyes. Lee grabbed a crunch bar, tore off the wrapper, and bit into it. All four of us huddled there on the corp, gobbling down candy, chewing as fast as we could, forcing it down, then shoving in some more, trembling, frightened, feeling sick. We had no idea that the biggest horror was still to come. I can't eat anymore, Tabby choked out. We had been stuffing ourselves with candy for several minutes. Tabby had chocolate running down her chin, and I saw chocolate stuck in the tangles of her blonde hair. Lee was bent over on the grass. He held his stomach and groaned. I don't feel so hot, he murmured. He let out a long, loud burp and groaned again. I never want to see another candy bar in my life, Walker whispered to me. I tried to reply, but my mouth was full. More houses, one of the pumpkin heads ordered. No, please, Tabby begged, bent over on the grass. Lee let out another long burp. It's almost midnight, Tabby protested. We have to go home. There are many houses to go, a pumpkin head told her, narrowing its fiery eyes. Houses forever, trick or treat forever. But we feel sick, Lee moaned, holding his stomach. We can't do any more houses tonight. Everyone has gone to sleep, Walker told the pumpkin heads. No one will answer the door this late. In this neighborhood, the pumpkin head replied. No problem in this neighborhood, the other creature agreed. In this neighborhood, you can trick or treat forever. But, 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 I sputtered. I knew it was no use. The fiery creatures were going to force us to keep going. They weren't going to listen to our complaints, and they weren't going to let us go home. Tabby helped Lee to his feet. She picked up his trigger treat bag and placed it in his hand. Then she brushed her hair out of her face and picked up her own bag. The four of us trooped along the streets, dragging the bags beside us. The night air had grown cold and heavy. A strong breeze rattled the trees and sent brown leaves scuttling past our feet. Our parents must be so worried, Lee murmured. It's really late. They should be worried, Tabby declared in a trembling voice. We may never see them again. The porch light at the first house was still on. The pumpkin heads forced us onto the porch. It's too late to trick or treat, Lee protested, but we had no choice. I rang the bell. We waited, shivering, feeling heavy and sick from all the candy we had forced down. Slowly, the front door opened, and we all gasped in shock. Oh! A low cry escaped Walker's throat. Lee jumped off the porch. I stared at the creature in the yellow porch light. A woman, a woman with a grinning jack-o'-lantern head. 
trick or treat? She asked, turning her jagged smile on us. Orange flames danced and flickered inside her head. Uh, uh, uh. Walker hopped off the porch and stumbled into Lee. I stared at the grinning pumpkin head. This is a nightmare, I told myself. A living nightmare. The woman dropped some kind of candy into my bag. I didn't even see what it was. I couldn't take my eyes off her pumpkin head. Are you... I started to ask, but she closed the front door before I could get the words out. More houses, the pumpkin heads commanded. More trick-or-treating. We dragged ourselves to the next little house. The door swung open as we climbed onto the front stoop, and we stared at another pumpkin head creature. This one wore jeans and a maroon sweatshirt. The flames hissed and crackled behind his eyes and mouth. Two wide, crooked teeth were carved into his mouth, one on top, one below, giving him a silly expression. But my friends and I were too terrified to laugh. The next house, we were greeted by two jack-o'-lantern creatures. We crossed the street and found another fiery-headed creature waiting for us at the next house. Where are we? I wondered. What is this strange neighborhood? The two pumpkin heads forced us onto the next block. The houses here all had jack-o'-lantern creatures living in them. At the end of the block, Tabby set down her trick-or-treat bag and turned to face the pumpkin heads. Please let us stop, she begged. Please. We can't do any more houses, Lee exclaimed weakly. I, I'm so tired, and I feel really sick. Please, Walker pleaded. Please. I can't do another house. I really can't, Tabby said, shaking her head. I'm so frightened. Those creatures in every house, she uttered a sob, and her voice trailed off. Lee crossed his arms over the front of his striped costume. I'm not taking another step, he insisted. I don't care what you do. I'm not moving. Me neither, Tabby agreed, stepping close beside him. The two pumpkin heads didn't reply. Instead, they rose high up in the air. I took a step back as their triangle eyes bulged wide and their mouths stretched open. Bright orange flames flew from their eyes, and then their mouths stretched even wider, and they both let out high wails. The shrill sound rose and fell through the heavy night air, rose and fell like police sirens. The pumpkin heads tilted back until their flames shot straight up to the sky, and their siren wails grew louder, louder until I had to hold my hand over my ears. I saw a flash of light and turned to see another pumpkin head floating towards us from across the street. I uttered a hoarse cry as more pumpkin head creatures hurried out of their houses, and then two more, and another creature, and another, and another. All down the block, doors flew open. Creatures floated out, floated toward us, hissing and wailing. Flickering, dancing flames shot out from their jack-o'-lantern eyes and mouth, sending orange light into the black sky. They floated and bobbed down across the street, across the dark lawns, wailing like sirens, hissing like snakes. Closer, closer, closer. Dozens of them. Dozens and dozens. Walker, Tabby, Lee, and I pressed close together in the middle of the street as the pumpkin-head creatures drew near. They formed a circle around us, a circle of grinning, fiery jack-o'-lantern faces over dark-robed bodies. The circle of creatures spun around us slowly, and as they spun, their heads bobbed and tilted on their shoulders. Slowly, slowly, they spun around us, and then they began to chant in their hoarse, crackly voices, Trick or treat, trick or treat, trick or treat. What do they want? Tabby cried. What are they going to do? I didn't have a chance to answer her. Four creatures stepped quickly into the middle of the circle, and when I saw what they carried in their hands, I started to scream. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. My scream drowned out the chanting pumpkin heads, and as the four creatures stepped forward, the chanting stopped. Their jack-o'-lantern heads bobbed on their shoulders. Their ragged smiles grew wider as they came near. They held their hands waist high, in their hands they each held a pumpkin head. Four extra pumpkin heads! Oh no! Lee cried out when he saw them. Tabby grabbed Lee's arm in terror. What are they going to do with those heads? Bright yellow flames flickered from the eyes and grinning mouths of the four extra heads. These are for you! A, a pumpkin head announced in a voice that sounded like sharp pieces of gravel being rubbed together. Oh! A low moan escaped my throat. 
I stared at the empty heads, stared at their fiery eyes, their ugly grins. These are for you, the pumpkin head repeated, stepping closer. These will be your new heads. No, you can't, you can't, Tabby screamed. Her cry was cut off as one of the creatures raised a pumpkin head over her. It had a hole cut in the bottom. The creature slammed the pumpkin head over Tabby's head. Lee tried to run, but a creature moved quickly to block his way and then slammed a pumpkin head onto his head. I stumbled back, my mouth open in amazement, hands pressed helplessly against the side of their pumpkin heads. Tabby and Lee ran down the street, ran blindly, ran screaming, screaming into the darkness. And then the creatures turned to Walker and me and raised the empty pumpkin heads high. Please, I begged, please, no. Please, I cried. Please don't give me a pumpkin head. Please, Walker joined in. And then we both burst out laughing. The two creatures set the empty pumpkin heads down on the ground. Then their own pumpkin heads started to change. The flames died out. The heads began to shrink and change shape. A few seconds later, Shane and Shauna had their own heads back. And then all four of us started to laugh. We hugged each other and spun around. We danced wildly, crazily up and down the street. We tossed back our heads and laughed at the moon and stars. Laughed until it hurt. It worked, guys, I exclaimed when we finally stopped celebrating. It worked, it worked. We really scared Tabby and Lee this time. They'll be scared for the rest of their lives. Walker declared. He slapped Shane on the back. Then he danced at another happy dance, waving his hands gleefully above his head. We did it, we did it, I chanted joyfully. We really did scare them. We finally scared them. That was so much fun, Walker exclaimed, and so easy. I stepped up to Shane and Shauna and hugged them both. Of course, I exclaimed. It helps to have two aliens from another planet as friends. Whoa, take it easy, Shane warned, lowering his voice. He glanced around nervously. We don't want any strangers to know that we're not from Earth, Shauna said. I know, I know, I replied. That's why we didn't use your weird powers to scare Tabby and Lee before. This year we were desperate, Walker declared. But we've got to be very careful, Shauna said. Shane rose up and turned to all the other pumpkinhead creatures who still circled us. Thanks for your help, brothers and sisters, Shane called to them. We'd better hurry home before anyone sees that we have invaded this whole neighborhood. Waving and laughing, murmuring happily to each other, the other pumpkinheads hurried back to their houses. In a few seconds, the street stood empty again, except for us four friends. We started walking down the middle of the street, making our way home. Walker and I dragged our heavy trick-or-treat bags beside us. Walker turned to Shane and Shauna. A smile spread over his face. When do you think Tabby and Lee will discover they can just pull off their pumpkin heads? Walker asked. Maybe never, Shauna replied. And we all started laughing all over again. We didn't stop until we reached the bottom of my driveway. Thanks again, I told Shane and Shauna. You guys were great. You were greater than great. You were awesome, Walker declared. A couple of times you even scared me, and I knew it was you. And do you know what else is great about having aliens from another planet as friends? I said, you two don't eat candy. That's right, Shane and Shauna agreed. That means Walker and I get to keep it all, I exclaimed laughing. I suddenly had a serious thought. I stopped laughing. You know, I've never seen you two eat. I told the two aliens, what do you eat? Shauna reached out and pinched my arm. You're still really bony, Drew, she replied. You'll find out what Shane and I eat when you fill out a bit. Yeah, Shane chimed in. People from our planet only like to eat very plump adults, so you don't have to worry for now. My mouth dropped open. Hey, you're kidding, right? I demanded. Shane? Shauna? You're not serious, right? That's a joke, right? Right? And that was the end of Attack of the Jack Lanterns, the Goosebumps book by R.L. Stein. The episode um, of Attack of the Jack Lanterns is from season two, and it's episode 10, and it is available on YouTube. So. If you want, you can watch that. It's just an episode. It's like 20 minutes or something. Um, and probably wherever else the Goosebumps series is streaming.